Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel on Garden Inspired Living. Stuart, we're glad to have him here, aren't we? Yep. And if you are a new follower and you haven't subscribed, well, consider doing so. If you've been viewing for a while, give us a thumbs up and let us know that you're liking the content that we're putting out. And of course, share it with others if you think they might like it as well. Um, it's been really, really busy around here as I continue to try to get moved in and get things whipped into shape. Today we have all sorts of projects to give you updates on. I've got some trees planted. I told you that was going to be the very <laughs> first thing that I wanted to get installed. She and told I'm you. thrilled. <laughs> so we got some trees planted and we're going to go over proper tree planting techniques. Um, I also have incorporated this absolutely fabulous lattice work. It might look familiar to those of you who have followed my channel for a while. I can maybe show them a picture of it. Yes, it added a whole new dimension, a whole new textural quality, and more importantly, a whole new degree of privacy to my fence in the backyard. This just got installed yesterday. There are a few appointments we still need to make on it, but nevertheless, I think it looks great, and I'll show you a little bit about that installation process. And then we'll go inside a little bit because I have lots of things coming in the mail. I think we had some rugs and a couple of a few other things like that, Stuart. And anyhow, it's just life unfolding here at the new cottage and I'm glad you're here to help unpack it along with me. Let's get started. question of the day for you, but today I'm going to answer a question that so many of you have had about this door that is on the side of my house. Now, I misspoke last time and I said this faced west. Well, my brain was getting ahead of my mouth. This actually faces east, which is why it's going to be the perfect spot, the perfect um, exposure for the hydrangeas, the azaleas, all sorts of those uh, southern living plants and encore azaleas that I want to put in this area. But a number of you have astutely noticed that there is a door here. And since this door is on the east side, you're saying, does that go into your bedroom? Does it go Where into your bathroom? Go? Where does it go? Well, it is actually an architectural vestige of the past before they remodeled the house. And so it's just a phantom door at this at this point. A phantom a door. A phantom door. Now, and some of you also <laughs> commented on the steps that come up this way um, and you know cracks in the concrete I'll address that a little bit later but what I love about this even though this is a door to nowhere there's there's a couple of considerations remember so many of you have had um, some really on point observations but please remember that I am in an historic preservation area so I am very restricted as to what things I can do to the exterior of the house. And believe me, there is no way because of the exterior, the original exterior, that I could just decide to completely brick this over and get rid of this door without jumping through years of historical preservations hoops, I am sure. The other reason that I don't want to get rid of it is because it's a wonderful little focal point when you're walking this way, particularly because I am going to design it as such. So I think I'm going to grow a rose up and over it. Stuart, I don't know if I've told you that. I think I knew this. But I think I'm going to grow a rose up and over it, probably start it from both sides, so hopefully it will meet in the middle. I would actually like to put an awning over it. I don't know if I'll do that or not, again, because of H HP considerations and because it might be something of an obstacle if I do grow some roses up it. Then I'll have some statuesque right here, evergreens. I've got two pots here. I, I don't know how well they're going to do, but I planted about 50 bulbs in each one of these pots in the, at the last minute. So I would have a few tulips in bloom. Um, and then there will be other landscaping along the side, some of which will hide boo-boos in the concrete like this. 
And then originally I had talked about planting some maples down here. When you say here, where are you pointing? I am pointing. At the street? Yeah, at the street, okay. the sidewalk that comes up these steps. Just make sure I can tell, that's all. Yeah. And originally maples, and then I thought through that some more, uh, conferred with oh, just a number of different people, and I decided on two fruitless ginkgos that will be there and maybe won't have a root structure that can really um, upend the sidewalk. So that's a consideration right here. And this is not a passageway that gets used very often. So the fact that these steps are steep doesn't bother me a bit. And I love the fact that it will be a focal point up this way, and it will be a wonderful little vignette in the area. Something else that I wanna comment on a little bit as we walk around to the tree, Stuart, I can hear your voice echoing off the houses. You can? Yeah. Um, so many of you have commented on my, my, my concrete windowsills. And I, apparently because in some instances the contrast is really high, it looks as if they are bright white and you're wondering why I don't paint them a different color. Well, they're concrete and they're part of the house and I just can't do that. So as they age a little bit more, it may be the angle of the sun, they won't look quite, quite so white, but I think, um, but they Oklahoma really, in, in real life, they don't, they don't look so, um, they just don't look so bright. contrasty and yeah. bright and white, yeah. Thank you, Stuart. Um, so let's come uh, down here right now. By the way, there will be flagstone and a gravel path that goes around to the back, but that's all to be addressed later. We're doing this in phases. And speaking of phases, before we get to the trees, Stuart, a number of you have asked about this walkway and the porch. So I think I gave you a status update on, on the red color of this porch before. Oh, coming back to the porch, sorry. Coming back to the porch. I wanted to give them the long view. I'm moving ahead of you, Stuart, I apologize. I just wanted to give them the long view. Um, and it's being painted red, and we're making progress in power washing off the red, but some of it is being extremely stubborn. So we may have to sandblast off the remaining red or use maybe even some kind of chemical paint remover. I'm not really sure we'll stay as organic as we possibly can. I think I remember using, I don't remember what it's called, but on something I used a real, an organic, really good paint It remover. really worked? Yeah. Okay, that's our question of the day for you guys though. If you know of something, um, one of my friends was also telling me about a product, but I just haven't, have not gotten to that, but I will. The other thing that really concerned a lot of you was the cracks in the walkway. And my thinking on this has really evolved over time. Um, and, and it goes without saying that there is, it's very expensive to put in a new landscape. With, you know, with an irrigation system and trees. And, and as you well know, it is not an inexpensive project. So the expense of laying new concrete was a, a real consideration. And I don't want it to stand out like a sore thumb. And even though we'll try to match the color to the existing concrete on the sidewalk and the pathway, that's still a consideration because it's got to age. The other thing is that a lot of, of the side sections where it meets up against the turf, that can be obscured, particularly on the steps, that can be obscured with some plantings along the edge that will spill out. Hi. Just seeing what's happening. Good to see you, Janie. We're shooting a video. This is Janie Dupree that many of you have seen before on our channel. Oh my gosh, I just saw your neighbors tell me you're I know, aren't they great? Tell Bill hi. Okay. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so if you haven't, go back in time and see. We did a garden video with my friend Janie and we'll also- We'll put it at the end of this. And we'll put it at the end of this. There's perfect um, timing. <laughs> yeah, perfect timing. Uh, believe me, this has been a very busy corner. Everybody wants to know what's going on and we've barely started. 
Um, so at, at, at any rate, I will have plantings that will cover up some of the boo-boos and the, the chipped concrete and such along the edges. And the other thing is, I thought it would be fun in these cracks to put in some new soil and to plant some like creeping thyme and some violas and some self cedars. And because I am a person, as you well know, if you follow me any length of time, that I find beauty and imperfection. That's me. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I like the cracks. But I ultimately decided that it would be easier to do it now than to do it later. So this stretch here will be replaced but it will be scored and everything and i can do this along hp guidelines because it will be just the way it was we're bringing it back to the original and stuart remind me i need to give you a shot i found a picture of this house when the entire front was completely overgrown with shrubs well if i if i can find it quickly what year enough, was it we'll put it in the video i just found that the other day no, i mean what year was the photo from uh i'm not sure interesting but over the year you know this house was built in 1900 so i'm sure it's, it's a couple it's, of years ago yeah it's evolved but there aren't necessarily a lot of pictures to way back when all right trees um, okay so trees finally <laughs> I always, I always, but hey, I know you guys, it's good. so hard for me to answer all of your comments. So this and is I how want, we do but it. I do want you to know that I am reading them and this way I can collectively uh, answer your questions without ignoring you, but in one fell swoop. Now I have to tell you, we had a little break there because I had a big old piece of hair out of place and Stuart told me about it. And mm -hmm. I put it back Not for sure. all of you, that, you out there that worry about my hair. I have calyx, I have no control over them. And if I'm out in the wind, there's just not much we can do about it. That's just real life. Um, but the trees are installed. I think they're absolutely beautiful. And you know what, Stuart? I think we need to show everybody how John we got Alinda to this. John Alinda was a professional videographer. Yeah, yeah. well, I don't know about that, but yeah, I did you're take... You're better than you give yourself credit for. I did take lots of footage of what went down when we got these installed. Two Nuttle Oaks here and a maple on the hill. Let's take a look at it. Well, every day is kind of like Christmas when you've moved into a new house and you need so many new things for the particular spaces and dimensions of this house. One of them being lots of runners. So I got this one off of eBay. Here is, here is one of my frustrations and a question of the day. Do you guys get as frustrated with shrink wrap as I do? On every level, on the fact that it's the nature of it and it's not, it's unbiodegradability. So I'm opening this. This is the first time you guys have seen it. Hopefully I will like it. Hopefully it will look good where I want to place it. Okay, this is interesting. I've never seen this before. Is that a mouse pad what are I don't <laughs> those are I don't know what those are. They look like some kind of are they knee pads or something? Okay, this is a hand knotted rug. So anyhow, I'm gonna kind of see where I'm hoping to put this in place. If it's the right dimensions, a lot of times I the dimensions won't be exact and uh, sometimes my measurements will not be exact, but I've got a couple of places I can use this. So I felt pretty confident in going ahead and getting it. And one of them is going to go over here in front of my sink. And once I get it into place a little bit later, Stuart and I'll show you if it worked and if I like it. Oh my, I'm so excited. I'm working in my office and I just looked out the window and I'm seeing my trees coming. In fact, they're knocking at the door right now. Oh, these trees are really beautiful. They are bald and burlapped. And today it's supposed to get up to 70. It's kind of windy, but I am hoping that these trees will help mitigate some of that wind that comes up on my corner. So it's the two Nuttle Oaks and an October Glory Maple that are going in today. And these guys at Cityscapes, uh, Cityscapes is who I've worked with for years and years. And my friend Kayla, who owns the company, knows exactly what kind of trees I like and uh, kind of what 
oh, sometimes if I'll say low branching or something like that, she knows exactly what I'm talking about. So look at how straight and beautiful those trunks are. So we're marking the spot of where the trees will be. They'll be in a line with the other trees on the street. And one of the reasons that trees are no, or, or some streets are no longer lined all of with the same type of trees is because when you put all of your eggs in one basket and then that basket gets sick or infected like Dutch elm disease or something of that nature, then you not only lose one tree, but you lose the entire tree up and down the street because one tree will infect the other. Now these are long lived recommended trees for Oklahoma. The two that we're putting here on either side of the walkway are nettle oaks, uh, which is one of the trees that was growing at my other home on the driveway. And they will make beautiful shade trees over time. They're gonna be planted far enough away from the sidewalk and the street that they shouldn't disrupt with their roots. Um, we have gotten confirmation from everyone, utility companies, et cetera, et cetera, that it is all right for us to do this. And I'm hoping that, again, these will provide something of a windbreak in addition to being two sentinel trees that will frame the entrance to my house. And this is the very, these are the very first things that are being installed here. So I could not be more excited. Um, so we'll make sure to really prepare dig big holes, prepare the holes well, get them well watered, and we are doing this at a very good time, I'm hoping, because we've got an 80% chance of rain tomorrow, so hopefully this will get them nestled in. And then a little bit later, I'll probably come back with some transplant solution. So Kayla is making sure right now that they are both exactly equidistant, and she's taking measurements both from the sidewalk between the sidewalk and the street and then also the distance from the entrance to my house and the distance to where the trees will be planted. So they're, they are literally marking the spots because I want as much symmetry as possible and as much replication of the, the cadence of the way the other trees on the street are planted. So I'm standing at the corner now, and you can see how beautiful it will look. At one time, there were trees in that spot, and over time, I don't know what happened, but they succumbed and they died. So we are basically replacing trees that were there historically in the past. And it really is, is very obvious, I think, when you walk up and down this block, this is on a corner, that there seems to be a big void there. You could tell that there, there needed to be trees there and that there probably once were. So this will finish the allay or the line of trees that are along the street. And I think it will not only enhance my home, but it will really enhance and beautify the street itself. So I'm not mic'd up, but hopefully it's not too windy out here. I'm here with my friend Kayla that I, you have seen before, I've worked with Kayla, and she was the one who sourced these Nettle Oaks and the October Glory Maple for me. So Kayla, talk to me a little bit about where these, what the provenance was of these trees. These are Oklahoma grown? Oklahoma grown, um, central Oklahoma. Okay. Um, from a tree farm in Lexington, Oklahoma. Um, they were dug. Uh, ball and burlap forest okay. um, right before the hard freeze and then they healed them in to keep them from freezing out. Okay, um, so explain they... healed in for people that don't know. Uh, well, for a lack of better words, they after they got it in the burlap forest, we needed some insulation to keep it from freezing out. Mm -hmm. um, so they just took big piles of uh, dirt mulch kind of mixture and poured it on top of the root ball and uh, kept insulation on it yep. so that we could get through the hard freeze. Yeah, because it was a pretty pretty bad freeze. And actually, I'll insert an image here because I did the same thing with some boxwoods Correct. that, I'm tra that I am um, going to be transplanting in the past because they do need insulation, but it's kind of like fake planting. 
Yes. Like temporary Above planting. planting. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and now, because it is windy here on this corner and in Oklahoma in general, you're going to be staking these trees. Correct. It'll get three stakes. Um, we prefer three inch round wood stakes okay. over the metal. Okay. Um, aesthetics is one reason. Uh huh. Um, uh huh. And uh, the, the other reason is uh, metal is real hard to get out of the ground. Yep. And um, when it's time to remove them, and the wood stakes will actually deteriorate so that we don't have an air pocket down here next to the root ball that will allow air to get in it after we remove it, causing yes. air to get too much air to get to the root. Right, and the roots then grow into a void. Correct. And so you don't want that to happen. So that is that is also good to know. Um, and then we've got the guys are over here working right now on the maple and we carefully planned this timing did we not uh yes rescheduled what three times we've re <laughs> yes much to my dismay but you know typically in oklahoma i always like to plant in the trees in the fall or in the winter so that they get their root systems established before the heat comes in and winter planting tends to work well for us. Correct, and most people don't understand, but it's not as dangerous to the tree if you plant it while it's dormant. Um, you know, it, it gives it time to get settled. Yes. Because through the digging process, that tree is gonna settle a little bit. And when those roots do start coming out in the spring and it starts budding and growing, mm -hmm. those roots have a place to grow um, where they're not too deep. Whether or not to do it. We'll talk a little bit more about that once we get these trees into position. But the other thing where our, our timing I think was crucial is it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Absolutely. So if it rains tomorrow and it's a good soaking rain, which hopefully it will be, that will nestle. That's right. That will It'll nestle. Allow them to go ahead and start kind of settling yes, yes. into place right where they're going to live. Yep. And putting out root growth not top growth, That's but right. all its energy into establishing itself Correct. in the root zones. And they are being as careful as they can with the root ball because we in no way want to disrupt the root ball if possible. Precious, precious root ball. Okay. Kayla, I will talk to you again a little bit later as we're ready to actually get them in place and in the ground. Okay. Truth be told, this part always makes me really nervous and requires a lot of strength and a very strong dolly. And strong backs. Well, it takes a lot of shoveling, a lot of strength, and a lot of manpower, not to mention some really good tunes to keep you entertained to plant a tree so that the hole is wide enough and deep enough to accommodate the root ball. And actually, width is more important for most trees than depth. I've got my tree experts here. Kayla, number one, what are we doing? Uh, right at the moment, he's just adding a little bit of water to the bottom of the soil, loosen it up, um, and it'll it'll put a little moisture on the bottom of the tree, mm -hmm. uh, make it just a little bit easier uh, to kind of settle and uh, start packing. Um, while you don't want to pack it too hard, you do want to pack it uh, in just a little bit for stability purposes. Okay. And this will also help those new roots by having moisture down in there start to penetrate the subsoil, put encourage, as you said, more stability. But the other thing is, even though we're hopefully we will get some rain tomorrow, yep. if we go into a dry spell, there is deep moisture. Correct. To, in, to encourage deep rooting. Now, people are gonna ask, explain the rationale for the shape and the size of the hole. Okay, so most people want to dig the hole round, mm -hmm. which is the way the root ball comes. But what happens when you get a round hole, the roots 
when they start penetrating the burlap and growing, they hit that hole that's round and that root can't, it has nowhere to go except for in a circle. Mm -hmm. And so it causes girdling or curdling, sorry. Yes. Um, and typically you will see trees wrap in two or three years and they start dying back and you don't know why. Yeah, and I can speak from experience. That happened unbeknownst to me because it was covered up with some liriope and it started to girdle to my caddo maple. And Correct. I then had to go back and take corrective root pruning measures. But right now, so, so the square hole will then allow it to, to kind of defy the bounds of the circle and go out into... Cor correct. It, it'll still hit this hard wall, if right. you will. But instead of going in a complete circle, it's going to come up here and it's going to have more room to grow mm -hmm. laterally yeah. in, instead of just in an automatic yeah. curve. In soil that's been loosened and is more friable. Correct. Okay. Yes. Now, the other thing is, let's talk about, I know the recommendation is to not add soil not amendments add soil in our amendments. Oklahoma clay, but you and I, in our ex personal experience, we have found that it is beneficial to add a little bit of amendment. So describe to me what we're doing here. Okay. So this is clay that has come out of the hole. We've dug right. it out. Um, when you start backfilling with just this, you're not ever going to get it to mesh, right? When you're packing it. So it's going to leave air pockets because when that goes in the hole, it's not going to go in like that. It's just going to go in with a shovel and it leaves an air pocket. Yeah. As you water it, that air pocket gets bigger, right? Mm -hmm. Allowing too much air to the roots causing other issues yes. down so the road. The root is growing into just an empty hole. Correct. Okay. Right. So we took the, the native soil out of the hole and mixed it in this form of the native soil with just a cotton bird compost. Okay. So now you've got good, dark, rich soil and we don't have those big chunks anymore. Yeah. We've got smaller manageable chunks that as you are backfilling and packing, two things are happening. You can pack it and get the air pockets out. And when I say pack it, we're not packing it real hard. Right. We just want a nice Remove the fit. air pockets. Correct. Okay. And then as we're watering it, as the tree comes in, the water can penetrate this, break it down, fill those voids, those air pocket mm -hmm. voids with this. And yeah. now we've got a good, nice, stable bed for our tree. And it helps us stabilize that tree to where maybe we don't have to put stakes on it. Yeah, and feed the soil. Though we are going to put stakes on it because this is a windy corner. Correct. But the other thing to point out is we're not giving these trees just a diet of the good stuff, you know, and, and spoiling it. And then when it, when it reaches the confines of the big hole all of a sudden it's like trying to root put out roots through concrete we are giving it just a little bit of help and oxygenating that soil a little bit better and creating Correct. more friability and more air pockets for them so this hole and, and one more thing about this okay before we get too too far away from it a, a brand new tree going in the ground doesn't need a lot of immediate fertilizer because it's not actively growing right now, right? Right. The roots are not. This is going to slowly break down and become a natural fertilizer. In an organic way. Yes, correct. And sometimes you and I have also put just lots of leaf litter and things like that yes. in the hole to help out. Now, let's talk a little bit about the rule of thumb for the size of the hole. So this is what, one and a half times? Okay, so this is one and a half times wide. Mm-hmm based on the measurement off of the root ball. The root ball measurement height from the ground up, yeah, we're, uh, we're at 21 inches okay. on the root ball. Our hole is approximately 18 inches. Okay. And the reason being? When, when you're putting in a tree, especially of this size, we're putting it on virgin soil. And virgin clay soil and virgin with very clay poor soil, drainage. Yes. 
uh, that tree, the weight of the tree is going to cause our soil to compact. Mm -hmm. And when it compacts, we need to make sure that we are not above our root line. So the flare will actually not be buried. The root flare of those top roots will be at the very surface. Correct. Okay. And then over the course of, you know, time, six months, a year, depending on water, you know, mm -hmm. content in the soil, yeah. it will finish out right at the level we want, mm -hmm. preserving the very base of the trunk mm -hmm. so that it doesn't get too wet and rot out. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the size of this tree. And, and, the, and these are in terms of what are called calipers. Calipers. Which is the diameter of the trunk. Yep, so approximately six inches up, it would measure three inches around. Okay. So this is a three inch caliber tree, which is a pretty large tree. Correct. And, um, and, and the reason for me is I, I want a tree that won't look too small in comparison to the others. And because I'm not getting any younger, so I want a little bit more maturity to my tree. And also I want more of an instant windbreak. So, so share a little bit about cost information i know it depends on so many different factors a lot, of, a lot of different factors um but the the cost of this tree to purchase it um in in this size getting a tree as tall as what we are mm -hmm. um you know tax and all we're under 300 dollars to purchase the tree okay and that um, then you pay for installation on top of that if you're not the one correct yes that's right you've got installation you've got a little bit for the soil amendments um but bang for the buck health of the the plant itself the mm -hmm. larger it can be when it goes in the better success you're gonna yeah. have coming out of it yeah yeah for if you do good soil prep other people would say the smaller the tree the better because it's easier to prep for a small, easier, smaller tree. Yep. So, and these are beautiful nettle oaks, and I always, it's important to, to spec exactly what you want. And I told you I wanted two trees that were as symmetrical as possible in terms of their profile, their height, their everything. And that's very important if you're working with a landscaper to specify exactly what you want, if not going out and picking them up yourselves. So I'm any, any other tips that we need to share? We're obviously, we are going to stake them. We're going to give them, it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Correct. But if we go into a dry spell, we will put some gator bags or donuts we're, or... We're using donuts. Donuts, okay. And uh, I've got them, we'll put them down after the okay. rain. We want Mother Nature to do, do her, her job. Yeah, do her job. Yeah. Now, honestly, obviously, I don't like the look of the stakes or of the gator bags. And hopefully... Mother Nature will benefit us with lots of moisture, but you do what you need to do to get things established Correct. and your due diligence. And this is not unlike how they do it in some in some parks or wherever where they're planting trees of this size. Right. Okay. And then another, another thing that is pretty critical to our new trees is we don't want to trim them a whole lot when they're brand new. Okay. The first year we don't want to hardly trim on them at all. Um, if we have a broken branch during travel or planting, obviously we want to clean that off. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people you'll see come in and they'll, they'll cut this stuff off. We don't want to do that in the first year if we don't have to because it'll stress the tree. And we want to, well, you want to leave its ability to photosynthesize and produce as much food as possible while it's getting established. Boy, look at those beautiful clouds on the other side. The sky is just beautiful, isn't it? This is a perfect kind of day to plant. Yeah, it really is. So then lastly, let's talk about the brick wall itself. There's some uh, vinyl twine on it or yep. rope that obviously will come off. Yep, holds the wire cage in place. And we've seen so many examples of trees that have died because too much of that of that roping or this, you want to protect the root ball, but you, if you leave too much of the structure to protect the root ball in place, then that can kill ca and cause problems for the tree down the line. So you have to Correct. be very careful about that. Right. So we're, we're going to cut the bottom of the cage off okay. before it goes in the hole. Okay. But we're going to leave the rest of the cage on there. Um, obviously, this is not a small tree that we're just going to be able to pick up and sit in a hole. Uh -huh. We're going to have to use the tree to help us get the tree in the hole. Right. Right. 
So we've got to have the cage on it to keep the root ball intact. Uh, but once we get it set, it is exactly where we need it to be. Mm -hmm. We'll cut the metal cage off. The burlap is going to stay on it. Because it will break down over time. Correct. And become organic matter. But then this nylon rope will be cut off of it. The top of the burlap will be laid back in the hole. And uh, then we finish back filling it with... So, so a properly planted tree truly is a thing of beauty and and it is a good investment to take the time and the effort to it's you know it's that that old adage you put a one dollar plant in a ten dollar hole and it's more about the hole sometimes and than it is about the specimen itself so gentlemen i thank you for helping me today and we'll be back out later and take later and take a look at what they look like when they're in position the again these are two nuttle oaks a recommended plant tree i believe recommended for oklahoma good long-lived yes investment tree provide good shade and then we have another maple to plant later so we'll be back with an update so one thing that's always crucially important to me, and Kayla knows this, any time that these guys are planting for me, I always like to see exactly how they're sighted so that the pretty part is where is facing the direction that I want the pretty part to be and also is as symmetrical to the other tree in terms of its profile. So that's really important to me. So these guys know that it, it's, we all kind of do an assessment and make sure that it is located. And sometimes that requires making some adjustments on really heavy specimens like this. But for the long term, again, it is time well spent to do your due diligence at the beginning. Okay, let us go. So let me just, let me explain what we're going to do. Okay, we're, I told you that we were going to support these. So we have in posts to hold the tree. And then we're strapping them to the posts. And even though Kayla, what did you tell us earlier about pruning? That we didn't want to prune it too early in life. If you did, you just wanted to do it minimally. Okay. So to... Uh, not cause the strap to break a tender limb mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna prune a couple off okay. where our straps are likely to rub it okay See, I, I trim this one and if the wind blows too hard that strap moves a little bit it could cause it to break to break and be and be a wound that would open us up for insects or disease other disease and problems correct okay so you're so, and you're probably doing it a little bit loosely so that there's not too much friction correct against it'll, the bark. it'll, it'll bruise the bark yeah uh, again causing a, a scar right. uh, but an open wound yeah. you know for the insects so not unlike skin a, an abrasion or a, a wound is a vector for entry for disease or pests or things like correct. that and we want we want to avoid that as much as possible and then these are pretty sizable stakes because this is a very windy corner and again we're using wood and not um, and not metal stakes and then you have not planted these too deeply and let me come down here a little bit because what we don't want is a volcano of mulch so that is our dirt. Yeah. So this top of the root this ball. is the top of the root ball right mm -hmm. here. So you see, we're not burying this too much. And when you do mulch it, we're not putting more than an inch. Or even, is, we'll we'll put three to four inches out here. But when you get up here within about three to four inches of that root ball, right? You almost don't want any mulch. Yeah. Because it can really keep this overly wet, mm -hmm. and and basically make it rot. Okay. And then we, you're putting in a nice, clean tree well. Yeah, now we'll have to come back and make the tree wells a circle for you. Yeah, After okay. After we get through this rain, yeah. they'll be able to cut us some fresh sod. Um, so okay. Friday yep. or Saturday. Yeah, that'll we'll... be great. So they're in squares right now, but nevertheless, you guys will water these trees in right now. They've already, yes, and they've watered all. We're gonna water them right now. So we have both trees in place, and now we're planting that gorgeous maple. And boy, these are beautiful trees, Kayla. You did a great job in picking them out. Thank you.
Well, it may be a cold and dreary day, but we've got some sunshiny elements being added to the garden. And we are repeating something that I did, kind of a cheat that I did at my other house. And that was to top my existing fence with some framed lattice. And that will give me more height, more privacy, more of a sense of enclosure without sacrificing any air circulation and also repeating elements that are already in my house because I've got that diamond shape in the windows and in other areas. So this is the first phase. These were, these were built in the shop, correct, Kayla? Uh-huh. These were built in the shop and they will get them installed and then they'll fix any any little boo-boos, any paint marrings or anything of that nature. And Kayla, these are made out of? Uh, treated pine. And uh, the trellis is also treated. And it's, it's not the flimsy lattice trellis work. Correct. It, it's right. the heavier. Yes. I don't know if that's, is that in a gauge or a thickness? Uh, no, it's uh, just a, a three quarter inch uh, wide lattice. Lattice, okay. Yeah. And then you topped it off? With, uh, this is a two by four treated. And then the little trim piece mm -hmm. is a one by treated, both pine. Yes, and that makes them look very finished and very custom. And then once we get them into place, we will incorporate some finials that will be painted in the same color, but we'll do that a little bit later. And then something else that we'll be working on, it looks like a yard sale in my backyard right now, um, is to reshape that gate and have it a little bit more appealing. And that will probably also be done in the shop. Am I correct? Correct. Well, I'm going to let them get to it, and I'm going to go inside because it's cold out here. Well, Stuart, this is exactly what I was looking for in this narrow space in between the sink and the refrigerator. And this one, I was really focusing on the color because I think that the blues in it match the blues in the island and these other kind of, oh, clay colors or whatever match the painting and parenthetically also match my fuzzy slippers that I've got on today because it's cold and rainy outside um, and my blue socks. When you buy rugs like this, um, for one of the reasons I do it on eBay is because there's a good selection, there's a great price point, and you can you can offer up a price point that you are comfortable with. And for me, this certainly was at that price point, and it looks exactly the way I look. Some of these rugs, this is a hand knotted rug, and you can see I could practically use it on either side. One pulls out, as Stuart noticed, pulls out the blues a little bit more, and the other pulls out these kind of oh, clay or or I don't know what color, rust colors. I also like it because it's thin. It doesn't have a thick pile. I will put some kind of, of floor protector underneath it, a liner underneath it. The other reason I like it is because it's got a very shallow profile, a very narrow profile for tripping, which later on could be a consideration. And then an update on a couple of things that you guys had lots and lots of comments on. So many of you very wisely told me about maybe the impracticality of having my meds in a bottom drawer. Well, I certainly take that to heart. And when I have grandchildren or I have large numbers of children, definitely that will be removed. But for right now, it is practical for Hubs and I. And I have also, I also could put some kind of child lock or something on it. But again, that's not in my lifestyle right now, but it's definitely a lifestyle 
lifestyle consideration if you do have small children, grandchildren, whomever running around, maybe even pets. Right now, none of those things fall into my category. The second thing that I want to comment on a little bit is many of you said, well, why don't you put your coffee station here? So when you get a wide perspective of the kitchen when you first walk in, I think intuitively, especially for coffee drinkers, the first place you might come is here because it's in a primary location. And actually, that's where I set up my coffee station first for a number of different reasons, particular to Hubs and myself, this wasn't a good location for us. The other reason is from an entertaining, entertaining standpoint, I think I told you this was kind of like my, my entertaining center, entertaining headquarters. This will go back into the great room for when we entertain and is also easy access to the front room. So for us, it made more sense for it to be kind of a cocktail station and to open wine bottles and such than a coffee station. But primarily my motivation for moving it was because the coffee pot is probably one of the only appliances that I leave out because we use it so frequently throughout the course of the day. To have an expensive look to your kitchen, that's one of the tips that they give you is don't keep your appliances out, put them in hiding, and only bring them out when you use them. But my coffee pot, it's out 24-7, is, is bleh, isn't it, Stuart? It is. Sorry for me to say that <laughs> because you guys are always coming in and out and invariably you want a hot drink. Maybe one, 10 so, minutes ago. so when I first walk in, I don't particularly want to see that coffee pot, empty coffee pods, the detritus from making coffee. And so because of that, I didn't want that to be the first thing you saw and a focal point upon entry to my kitchen. I'd much rather them see this beautiful blue stemware and this beautiful blue crystalware. So I think it makes a much more beautiful presentation. A number of you also commented, couldn't I just put this little picture on an easel? And yes, and I have an easel somewhere that I'm going to try. I liked that idea. I had thought about it and then forgot about it again. So thank you for that, that reminder. Something else that I want to do over here, I noticed in this space, is even though I have ambient lighting, it's not necessarily task lighting, but I have ambient lighting throughout my kitchen in the form of some small lamps, um, over the cutting boards, etc. This area kind of absorbs light, doesn't it, Stuart? Yeah. And it's kind of a dark void. And I really want this to have a little bit more illumination. So enter those wonderful oh, motion-activated yeah. light strips. I just ordered some more of them. I'll show them to you when I get them to put underneath the counter so or underneath the cabinet. So when you approach this area and you want to make yourself a drink or you're looking for a glass or whatever, and just to make you smile, this will be illuminated. Because for example, over here, I already have one of these battery charged lamps, bar lamps, which brings me to something else you guys asked so much about. What was my source for these? And I will put a link below. I also put it in the community tab. I got these off of Amazon and they are so good looking. They're a combination of this burnished brass and marble. They're beautiful. However, they are battery operated. There's no cord attached to them. You use a rechargeable connection to get them um, activated again. And I have to say that in that and, and that feature of them, I'm disappointed. They really don't hold their charge long enough, I think, to purchase. But if you want them just for short-term effect and for just the sheer good looks of them, then you might want to order them, and I will put a link below. I don't know that if across the board, other varieties might have a battery that lasted longer. This is short-lived but it is nice and it's got different degrees of illumination. So it may be one of those things that you only illuminate for special occasions if you don't want to be a slave to charging.
Maybe just keep it there and just turn it on when you... When yeah, you just turn, turn it on or when you entertain or turn something, kind on. of like you maybe use it as you would a candlestick. You kind of light it uh, for the short term when you're going to be there to tend it. So those are just a couple of updates on some of the things that you guys commented about a lot and my thinking behind them. And we'll do a few more follow-ups on those types of observations on your part later on. Stuart, I'm so excited. Look at that. Can you see the so. buds starting to emerge crazy. off of this October glory maple? And we planted them at just the perfect time because we got a rain the next day. It was cool and rainy the next two days. Perfect conditions for getting these established. This one is absolutely beautiful, um, as are the Nuttle Oaks. Stuart, down here, well, be careful. What's this one again? This is October Glory Maple. Oh, cool. And then these down here are Nuttle Oaks. And I think they look absolutely beautiful. That one, does it look like it's leaning a little bit to Not you? Not so much from my angle, but okay, maybe well, from a different We'll one. make sure while we still have a little bit of, of leeway to move them just a tiny bit to make sure that they're absolutely straight. Now, do I like these big old posts that are on here? No, I don't. But we explained, yeah, we explained why, and they're necessary. And this is, this is windy in, it's windy in Oklahoma in general, and it's windy in this spot in particular. So definitely, definitely we, we want to make sure they're secured. And let's see, do we have any buds coming out on this yet? Not quite as obvious as on the other, Stuart, but a little bit. So hard. There we go. Well, I have it. And by the way, if you are new to this channel, Stuart is my photographer or business you just partner. Got to see my hand more than you ever have before. Boom. Best buddy, but he's not my husband. That would be hubs. So anyhow, I think it's it's looking good. And we've got other infrastructure things that we need to take care of. I talked about the sidewalk. We've got to get the sprinkler system in. But nevertheless, I feel very much at home, Stuart, because I do have some beautiful topiary on my front porch. And I think it's just, it's fun to see everything kind of evolve over time, isn't it? Absolutely. And boy, the neighbors seem very, very interested and very curious. It's such a fun neighborhood. So there you go. Stuart, have we forgotten anything? Usually not. Okay. I, okay, well, I, I hope, I hope you enjoyed walking through these projects with me. Um, and we'll just see what happens in the next segment.